Hey guys, I'm Jess Stammers from Board Game Geek TV, and I'm here with Martin Wallace from Tree Frog Games. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and start us off? Oh, hi Jess, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, yes, I put the board upside down, haven't I? Why didn't you tell me that? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was showing it well, to you. It's it, okay, well, we're well, showing well, everything. It. Probably doesn't make it's sense. It's fine, no worries. Uh, yeah, this is Ankhmore Pork Discworld, which is the latest uh, Tree Frog release. This, in fact, is the collector's edition. Um, there are altogether, there are three editions of the game. There's um, the standard edition, which in America will be released by Mayfair. Mm -hmm. This is the collector's edition, which is only available from Tree Frog Games via uh, online orders. And then there will also be a deluxe edition, um, which has little resin pieces, which I'll put a copy over there and I'll cool. bring the pieces out in a minute. But first of all, I'll do a quick description of the game. So the game is about the city of Ankh-Morpork, which is the largest city on in the fantasy world of Discworld. So have you heard of Terry Pratchett? Terry Pratchett, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Terry Pratchett has written hundreds of novels about this fantasy world. And a lot of these novels talk about this city of Ankh-Morpork. Um, so this is game centers on the city of Angmorpork and kind of deals with, the, tries to bring to life the flavor of this city. So the background story is that the Lord of Angmorpork, uh, Lord Veterinary, for reasons that are not explained, has gone on holiday or been kidnapped, disappeared. So he's no longer on the scene. So there is a power struggle to fill this power vacuum. So each player, is a player who's trying to, well, may or may not be trying to take over the city, because what you have to do to win the game depends on which character you are. Okay. So everybody gets a secret personality. So, we'll show this one. Right, okay. Because uh, players love secret personalities in games. It's, it's the mechanic of the moment. So there are seven personalities in the game and which personality you get determines what you need to do to win the game so if you end up with one of the lords there's three lords then you have to control a certain number of areas uh, in a four-player game this would be four areas so controlling an area means having more of your pieces in an area than anybody else so if i'm blue if i've got two minions in there th these are minions then I control that area. Similarly, I might have a house there. That means I have more pieces than anybody else. I would control that area. So that's these three lords. We then have Dragon King of Arms. Now, uh, what I forgot to get out of the box, have I got any trouble markers out? <laughs> Probably not. Excuse the delay. Yes, trouble. I forgot to put the trouble on the board. Trouble is very important in Ankh Morpork. Um, it's their main import and their main export. So we have to have trouble in the game. Trouble. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's tr the, the word trouble. That trouble. Is, that is the term that Terry uses. That is the term that we use within the game. Did, and, and real quick, did you get to work with Terry on the making of these games? Terry himself is very, very important person. We would not have the time. I, I got as close as sitting down and having mashed potatoes and sausages with him, and I got to share his special wow wow sauce, but that's as far as it went. <laughs> this game, though, was developed in close cooperation with Terry's best friend, a gentleman called Bernard Pearson, who's okay. been a friend of Terry's for 20 odd years and knows everything about it, and he was our main liaison. Terry cool. was aware of the game, but Terry doesn't play games. He's, okay. not, he's not a games player. And also, I don't know if you're aware of his medical condition. He's got Alzheimer's. Oh, okay. He's got a very special form of Alzheimer's called PCA, post-cateral uh, Alzheimer's, which means that he could not play a game because he wouldn't be able to pick the pieces up because his eye, hand-eye coordination is gone. Oh. So, you wouldn't want to put him in the position right. of asking him to play a game yeah. because he wouldn't be able to see the pieces. Well, that's great that you got to work with his friend on that. Oh, it's been wonderful. They, I got to lo know Bernard very well and his team of people are wonderful people. I've made some really good friends. I met other people in the Discworld um, universe you know, who, who are part of right. this. It's kind of this circle of people around Terry. 
so we know those people really well so we made some really good friends that's cool yeah, that's, that's very cool been, it's been an interesting journey but anyway back to the game yes so trouble if for any reason you add a piece to an area so if this piece is here on its mm -hmm. own that's okay but if for any reason the piece is added you place a trouble marker if for any reason the piece is removed the trouble marker goes okay. so trouble is added when the number of minions goes up by one trouble is removed when the number of minions goes down by one it's I not see. based on the total number of minions if it may be that trouble marker had already been removed from there so just because there's two pieces in an area doesn't automatically cause trouble it's but when there's when a somebody, change I see then trouble is added or taken away and so if you are dragging king of arms see in the books this guy wanted to cause so much trouble that the city collapsed into chaos and welcomed back the king because he wanted to bring back the old king oh, to, okay. so he wants to get eight trouble markers on the board I've only got six there so he just wants to cause as much trouble as possible we also then have Chrysoprase, who is a mafia troll. He just wants to make money. So with him, you have to make $50 of money. So that's uh, money in hand and also the value of buildings. So we've got five Angmore port dollars okay. and we've got one Angmore port dollar. So he's just after about making money. Okay. We also have Lord Veterinary, who may have returned to the city in disguise. And what he wants to do is get his minions in place, ready to start pulling on the levers of power, get his spies into position. So he wants to get minions in a, and as, well, if with four players, he'd have to get them in nine different areas. So he's not trying to take control of an area, but he's trying to spread out, oh, okay? okay. So, and then finally, we have Commander Vines, who is the, the hero in lots of the books about Ankh Morpork. He's the chief of police, or chief of the Night Watch. Now, his victory condition is he doesn't want anybody else to win. Because if the deck of cards runs out and nobody else has won, he wins the game. So that's his victory condition. Stop that's any other bugger from winning the game. <laughs> okay, so everybody gets a personality. You keep this secret. So right. you're not quite sure who's in the game. Who's so there's seven what? personalities, only four players. So there's always going to be at least three personalities which are out of the game. So the gameplay itself, I try to keep as simple as possible because this game, this game isn't aimed at gamers. Okay? okay, this is not a hardcore geek gamer game. This game is for people who enjoy the books, who might not play games. So I've tried to keep it simple enough so that they can understand it. Right. You know, what you don't want to do with somebody who's not played games is give them something on the level of Agricola or Puerto Rico because it would just go over their heads. Right. So in this game, everybody gets dealt a hand of five cards. Um, and when it's your go, you play a card and you do what it says on the card. Okay. And then you fill your hand back up to five cards. And that's it. So the cards tell you exactly what you can do. So you don't have to keep looking to see spending action points on different actions and checking what you can do. If the cards say, if you don't have a card to allow you to do something, then you can't do it. Okay. So the cards usually allow you to do more than one thing. Uh, this isn't a particularly good selection, but each player gets a player aid. Okay. And that tells you what the symbols mean. So the symbol here means place a minion on the board, mm. inner adjacent to where you have another minion. Now this symbol here means you can build a house. So you can take a house, you place it in an area where you've got okay. a minion, you pay the amount of money. There cannot be a trouble marker though. Trouble interferes with buildings. I see. And then you take, you also, when you build a building, you get a special card that goes with the area that gives you a special power tied to that area, which I'll, I'll come back to later. The, the starting minions you are start, based on? You start with minions, Equal in to. three areas so here here and here so this at the moment this board is set up to show the starting position is it only the the color of minions for the amount of players for the players yes. okay. so at so the moment it's set up four, four okay. players four players so the skull and crossbow symbol in ankh morport there are a lot of assassins so a lot of and so this uh so we've got an assassin here mr pin and mr tulip so this allows you to remove a minion from an area uh, 
which also will remove the trouble. Uh, and you can only remove a minion mark from an area where there is a trouble marker. Okay. So if there's no trouble there, you can't kill anybody. If there's a trouble marker there, you can kill people. Because there's chaos and nobody's yes. going to notice. Absolutely. So. Then we have the watch symbol. This is this goes with the, the night watch. This allows you to remove a trouble because the police are going in and saying, OK, what's all the trouble here and calming things down. We then have the scroll symbol. That means because the, the, the order that the symbols appear on the card are the order in which they must be performed. Oh, OK. Because it's a strict order. So the scroll means look at the text, do what it says do on the text. Says. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll come back to some of the text later. Uh, the money symbol means you take that amount of money. So again, going back to Mr. Pin and Mr. Tulip, you kill somebody and you take a dollar for your trouble. So if you couldn't kill anyone, you then couldn't have the dollar. Oh no, you still take a dollar. You still get to take oh, a dollar. No, you still okay. get to take a dollar. Yeah, you still get paid for it. So even if you, you can't lie. perform you say, the first, yeah, we killed him. They're in a, yeah. they're dead. Yeah, they're in a canal somewhere. No worries. Here, give us the money. Or we kill you. <laughs> no, you still get the money. I guess that's true. Yeah. Now, up to now, all of the actions are optional. You don't have to do them. Oh. It may be you can't do them. But there's one action that must be done. You've got no choice about it. And this is the magic symbol, because there are wizards in the game. And the thing about magic is, when you use magic, there are always unintended consequences. So if you use a wizard, you have to draw an event card. Uh -oh. There are no good events. Uh -oh. They're bad to, oh my god, the world has ended, how do we get out of here? I mean, so you can have things like fires, explosions. Uh, my favorite is the demons from the dungeon dimension. These are dimension. pretty grim. I'm not uh, <laughs> demons from the dungeon dimension are wonderful. We have these little demon figures. You oh, randomly wow, decide cool. where they go, and they, they just mess up those your plans. Cool. And yeah. They're, they're horrible. So <laughs> you can have demons invading. Is that be... the only one that has a piece to it? Yeah, uh, no, there's also trolls. You can have trolls coming into town. So wow. there's trolls that can come into town. And the thing with trolls, you see, in Terry's book, trolls aren't bad. Okay. They're just bigger than normal people. If you have an issue with trolls, that's your problem. You know, the trolls just want so to just live in peace. Just don't pick a fight with anyone bigger yeah, than you. The, the demons will cause you issues. The trolls will just come in, and they just let more people in there. The thing with the troll is, if you're already in there, if you if I have a single piece in there, I've got control of it. If a troll is placed there, that counts as a minion. I've lost control of the area. So Simply based on point. size. Just, well, just it counts as a, a neutral piece. Oh, okay. So I've got one. The troll's got one. We're tied. Nobody has control. I see. So they may have an effect. They may not. It but depends. they're not weighted higher than. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. Every, every piece effectively has a value of okay. one in terms of control. So yeah, you, so you've got these random events. So basically, the, the thing with random events is if you've got a lot of buildings on the board, don't use a wizard you'll because just probably lose them. There's a good chance the buildings will be destroyed. If you're not doing very well in the game, use as many wizards as you can <laughs> because the chances are they will hit the player in the lead. And you know, those people who played it so far. The co there's been a number of people saying there's a degree of chaos in this game. Sounds this is like absolutely true. This is a highly chaotic game. It is by far the most chaotic game I have ever designed. And the chaos is there simply because that's what's in the books. Right. It's a chaotic universe. Things happen for no apparent reason. And if you didn't reflect that chaos, you wouldn't be doing justice to the books. Right. And also from the point of view of a player, it, again, if you're a if you're a hardcore gamer, you're going to find the chaos frustrating because you're going to have a very good plan and then somebody is going to play a card it up. and it all falls apart. If you go along for the ride and enjoy the story, like a lot of non-gamers would do, then you'll enjoy the game. The key thing is don't take the game seriously. Okay, because you're probably going to lose a you're lot probably of your gonna stuff. Lose, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, moving on very quickly. This card, this symbol here, so that was magic. Then uh -huh. we've got symbol here. This means you can play another card. So some cards, so you can chain cards. So it might be you play one card, do that. Play another card, do what's okay. on that. And then finally, we have an interrupt. This is, no, stop what you're doing. I'm going to stop that. For instance, like Wallace Sonky, for instance, will negate the, the text effect on a card. So, for instance, if you played Dr. Whiteface on me, okay. Dr. Whiteface, his effect is I either pay you $5 or that card goes in front of me and counts towards my hand size for the rest of the game. So if I had the Wallace Sonky card in my hand, I go, oh, no, you don't. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see. And there's a couple of others. So, I mean, I can quickly go through 
They're, no, it's because. Are think, those as common? Are those aren't very common, I guess. If there, if there are 132 cards in the game altogether. Every card is unique. Okay. You would not believe the amount of artwork that has been done for this game. I. Is it, people there, assume that artwork is done for free, or you know, that's you know, I don't know the artwork fairies do it, but I, <laughs> all, all of these characters have They're had to be created. Really great. Well, there's a lot of the characters that have never been drawn before. I mean, things like the Agony Ants have never been done before. And I'm sure uh, for any fan of the book, I mean, just simply the, owning this to see oh, the interpretations of the characters. Um, what, what's nice is some of the characters are based on real people. So there is a real person that looks like Mr. Boggis. Uh, you've got Mrs. Cake, Captain Carrot. Uh, let's see. It's like with the... Um, and a lot of them are based on... Terry was consulted over the artwork. So, for instance, okay. it's like with uh, Commander Vines. I mean, he's a very important character. Right. So His look has changed over time from how, when Terry first started writing uh, but he imagined Commander Vines as being a little bit like uh, Clint Eastwood, okay. who you might I be familiar with. That. But I don't know, he's changed. Because oh, he's over changed. the years, in, in the books, he's, because writers don't know what's in the future. Right. You know, they write a book thinking, I'll get this book published <laughs> and I'll be really happy and that's <laughs> it, I'm going crossed. to stop. Maybe I'll do and then way. you end up, you know, 20 years later and you've had umpteen books published right. and things have changed as things have developed. So later on, he said, oh no, really, he should look like Pete Postlethwaite, who you've probably not heard of. Mm -hmm. but he's an English actor. He died, unfortunately, he died uh, this year. Oh. Have you ever seen Jurassic Park 2? Yeah. He was the big game hunter in Jurassic Park okay. 2. That was oh, Pete Postlethwaite. Okay. <laughs> so if you watch the film, you can tell I by can the cheekbones. I can uh, see that. He, because Terry had reimagined him as being a more of a tough street copper. And so if anybody says, oh, that's not Commander Vimes, well, tough. That's what Terry says That's Commander what... Vimes looks like. <laughs> what Terry says goes. Yeah. So, yeah, so an awful lot of effort went into the artwork. The map itself, I mean, took about 300 hours and, yeah, to draw. Yeah, and this map is really great. I mean, you've got each most house but... has been individually drawn. So it's, it's not, I mean, it's been a massive team effort. I mean, there's right. I mean, myself with the design. Bernard Pearson has coordinated a lot of the artwork and made and provided descriptions to my artist, Peter Dennis, who's done a lot of the character art. Ian Mitchell, who is a partner of Bernard, he worked on the map and did, did, all, did all the map work. Um, you know, part of their team is also Reb and Bernard's wife, Isabel. They, they've all, we've all worked together as a team to produce this game. Cool. Uh, so it's been a massive effort uh, and very expensive which is why we're doing the collector's edition, trying to get some of our money back. Well, it's a really, the, the artwork and all of it, it's yeah. really fantastic, I mm, have to say. Thank you. So, um, and, and back to what we were talking mm. about. So, I see there's a, a dice over there. We haven't yes. really covered. Yeah, the, the dice is used for the random events. Okay. So, it'll say, generate, you know, if, if it says place, uh, say the demons of the dungeon dimension come up, place in four areas, you roll the die, each area's got a number between one and 12. I, I probably not mentioned the collector's edition. Mm -hmm. the, the, you, in the standard edition, the standard edition is, is almost the same as the collector's edition. The collector's edition is different in that it does not have the number eight. Oh. Because in the books, eight is the number of the beast. So you can't say eight because otherwise de demon portals open up and all bad things happen. So we had to take out the number eight. So on the standard edition, this will be area eight. But on here, oh, this is 7A. Seven seven eight. Eight. That means so this die difference. here, instead of having 8 on, has 7A. Oh, wow. Now, do you know how much it costs to make a mold <laughs> for a die? With a, di <laughs> with a it's different... It's cost me £1,400. So that's approximately wow. 2, 000, over $2,000 just to have the mold made, made to change the 8 to 7A. Wow. Yeah? And that's before we've actually paid for the plastic to pay for right, the Right, that's just the mold. Yeah, so just the mold. Oh my just goodness. Just changing that. We had to have the cards printed separately because one of them had eight on. So we had to change it to seven eight. That is cool though. So, I would but, hate for that to get into my bag of dice. And well, we've got <laughs> spare ones. So we've kind of got the spare ones. Anybody who's a Discworld fan, they, they've got to have oh, their special that is, Discworld <laughs> dice. That is pretty so, cool. Yeah, we, we did a few extra. I thought we might make, make a few extra sales. So yeah, with the collector's edition, you also, this is better quality. That's on hard cardboard. And you also get 
a nice poster. This oh. actually gives you, this has got all of the artwork that Peter Dennis did. So wow. this gives you an idea of the, the amount of artwork he's done all in it one place. And that's not all. To, to this one, if no, that's, that's not, not too much all player. of the cards. That's just the cards that Peter Dennis did. Oh my goodness. So you've got all of the characters laid out there for you and, th and the cover he did. We, the, wow. the cover, this cover is different from the standard edition because the Germans didn't like this cover. They said they wanted a turtle on the box. So we, we, for the standard edition, we gave them a turtle on the box. For okay. the collectors, we, we stuck a dragon. pretty cool too. Well, so. they, it's nice. The problem is when you put a dragon on a cover, people think, oh, it's just another fantasy game with a dragon on yeah. the cover. But if you're a Discworld fan, you'd recognize this as Ankh Morpork. But if you're not a Discworld fan, not going to mean anything to you. Okay. But that's okay. It allows us to distinguish our product from the standard product. So yes, you get a lovely poster. That's pretty And cool. you get the nice wooden money, which has got Lord Veterinary's head <laughs> So, yes. Um, and and you have there. to, and it comes in a standard tree frog box, so it'll look nice next to all your other tree frog games. Very nice. So, yes. Uh, so I think I've described the game. Yeah. Uh, I've been through the cards. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Is there anything Let's else I need to? Oh, yeah, I've just yeah, been yeah. through those. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the custom and then die. There were the resin ones that you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. Resin pieces. Oh, the resin pieces. Yes, the resin pieces. Yeah, if you're willing to pay an awful lot of money, and we're talking about $160. Instead of wooden pieces, uh, let's see if I've got the right bag. Yeah, you get um, these resin pieces. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, you get little resin houses, little resin minions. Wow. Um, no, they're so bacon. cool. The trouble markers have, are actually got little skull and crossbones on. And have I got the demon pieces in there? Yes, I've got demon pieces in there. It, it, was, wow. uh, it was my wife who said, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we had resin pieces? So we looked into <laughs> it and thought, it can be done. It's just very, very expensive, which is why we're having to charge so much for it. And they take a long time to produce. So I think we have about 60 copies here that are available to sell. So wow, you've got your little so demon cool. pieces and you've got your little troll. So yeah, it's... Oh, I love this. <laughs> it's a proper demon from a dungeon. That dimension. one is really cool. Yeah. So <laughs> we've not, I would say these pieces are literally hot off the press. They were delivered like the day before we set off here. So we actually put the sets together. Uh, so we've not even played it with, with the resin the pieces. pieces yet. So I'm looking forward to doing that, to actually sitting down and setting up with the resin pieces. Just to get a feel for it. They're so really, that's a really, really well pleased done. with those. Um, nice. So yeah, yeah, that that, that's the, cool. the custom. Thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, so that is Ankh Morpork. Uh, 